from the screen, I put their reading skill. Okay, by right, sepatutnya every new topic you are going to start with reading first. Okay, so number ten, volcano boarding at Cerro Negro, Leon, Nicaragua. Located near Nicaragua's second largest city, Cerro Negro is an active volcano that erupted as recently as 1999, and you are going to climb it and then ride to the bottom on a relatively rickety sled. Hugely popular with both tourists and locals, volcano boarding is an experience unlike any other. The volcanic rock that makes up your sledding surface is far less forgiving than snow, and given the slope, and depending on the quality of your board's design, you can reach anywhere between 30 miles per hour and 55 miles per hour. So goggles, gloves, proper footwear, and a jumpsuit are essential. Number 9. Sea Kayaking in the Pacific Ocean, Alaska, USA Kayaking can be as intense or relaxed as you make it. You can leisurely paddle around a lake or go crashing through whitewater rapids. Sea kayaking in Alaska, however, is an entirely different sort of experience. It isn't particularly strenuous, but it's certainly not for the timid. There's something both awe-inspiring and incredibly intimidating about paddling your way past glaciers and hearing the crash of icebergs. You're truly in the presence of giants. Of course, depending on the particular tour you sign up for, you'll also have the chance to see bears, eagles, whales, and more. Number 8. Mountain Biking in the High Atlas Mountains, Tupkal National Park, Morocco Please note, there is definitely a fitness prerequisite for this one. But if you've got the experience and activity level to face this Moroccan mountain, a remarkable adventure awaits, complete with truly breathtaking views, visits to Berber villages, and unparalleled trails. There are a number of guided tours that can take you through the High Atlas mountain range, but there's equally nothing stopping the experienced mountain biker from tackling this adventure without hiring professionals. It just requires a lot of planning and discipline. Remember that what comes down must go up first, so be prepared for both biking and hiking. Number 7. The Great Wall Marathon, Huangya Pass, China The Great Wall is one of those sites that everyone should see at least once in their lives. The problem is, as many a visitor will tell you, the experience can be a little disappointing because of just how overcrowded it can get. For any committed runners out there, however, the Great Wall Marathon offers two rare opportunities. First, a mixed and wildly challenging set of course conditions including steps, rough terrain, and crumbling stone. Second, it offers an opportunity to really connect with the iconic structure in the company of no one else but your fellow runners. It's considered one of the hardest marathons in the world, and one that is wholly unique. Number 6. Paragliding at Babada Mountain, Mula Province, Turkey Not much of a runner? Well, how do you feel about flying? Babada Mountain, located in southwestern Turkey, offers one of the highest takeoff points for paragliding in the world. People who have lived this thrilling skybound experience have said that just the journey to the top of the mountain is terrifying because of the elevation and condition of the road, which is often hugging a cliff and features no guardrails. But boy oh boy is the view ever worth it. You'll be taking off from a staggering 6,500 feet. From there, you feel like you're literally on top of the world for the 25 to 30 minutes you're airborne. Number 5. Base Jumping Angel Falls, Canaima National Park. Venezuela. Of all the thrilling experiences we're discussing today, this one is by far the most dangerous and exclusive. Base jumping is an extreme sport in which very few people partake, and the incidence of accidents and fatalities are incredibly high. But hey, we're here to talk about trips for adrenaline junkies, and this certainly fits the bill. Angel Falls is the world's highest waterfall at 3,211 feet, and with the proper documentation, as well as plenty of experience and the proper equipment, a person willing to tempt fate in the name of a big rush can launch themselves out into the air and free fall for roughly 10 seconds before pulling a parachute. Number 4. Exploring Active Volcanoes Thrinukakir, Iceland We've already talked about boarding down a volcano in Nicaragua, but the volcanoes of Iceland, both dormant and active, are an entirely different sort of experience. In this land of ice and fire, you'll get up close with these impressive forces of nature. Thrinukakir is dormant, having last erupted 4,000 years ago, and you can now travel inside this sleeping giant, descending 400 feet into the belly of the beast to explore the magma chamber. A few lucky tourists got to see Eyjafjallajökull erupt in 2010, but such experiences are uncommon. 
That being said, you can actually feel the heat from the aforementioned volcano's lava field. Or how about touring lava caves beneath Snæfellsjökull? Number 3. Diving with Great White Sharks, Neptune Islands, Australia Meeting face-to-face -face with the ocean's greatest predator, on its home turf no less, might not be everyone's idea of a good time, but if thrills are what you're seeking, swimming with great whites is just about as edge-of-your-seat intense as you can find. And a couple of businesses in Australia are only too happy to help your dreams come true. In order to get up close and personal with the underwater behemoths with minimal risk, you're outfitted with scuba gear and then lowered into the water in a cage. That being said, even armed with the knowledge that you're safe, we suspect that your heart is going to be beating out of your chest. Number 2. Cave Diving the Great Blue Hole, Lighthouse Reef, Belize The aptly named Great Blue Hole is one of the most awe-inspiring sights in the world. It is literally a giant sinkhole in the ocean floor, over 1,000 feet wide, which descends more than 400 feet deep. The resulting difference in water color makes for stunning photos from above, but the real treat is getting to explore this unique formation firsthand. This one-of-a-kind diving trip isn't for the uninitiated. You'll need to have 24 dives under your belt before taking the plunge. You won't find colorful coral down there. Instead, you'll observe ancient stalactites, which formed back when this was a dry cave. Translation, you'll basically be traveling through time. Number 1. Trekking on Everest Solukumbu District, Nepal Climbing Mount Everest isn't for everyone, but hey, if you're feeling up to it, more power to you. For those looking to experience the majesty of the world's most famous mountain without necessarily reaching the peak, the base camp trek nonetheless offers some incredible views and an immersive experience in a terrain and environment unlike any other, and which few people will see in their lifetimes. You might not be shooting for the summit, but you'll still be experiencing the challenges of acclimatizing to significantly different oxygen levels while facing tough terrain across a roughly 14-day trek. Mountain biking is a sport in which you ride specially designed bikes over rough terrain. It is a sport that requires strength, balance and good bike handling skills. Mountain biking has different categories, including downhill, dirt jumping and free ride. But most bikers prefer the cross-country and trail riding styles. Cross-country generally means riding a short route from one point to another, or in a loop. There are different kinds of terrains, and riders have to ride up and down steep hills. They use bikes which are lighter than normal bikes, and designed for a variety of terrains. Trail riding is riding a longer route along marked trails, tracks and paths, usually through woods and forests. The trail may be a single route or part of a larger, more complicated trail center. Mountain biking can be performed almost anywhere, and as with most sports, participants need the right equipment. In addition to the bike, a rider needs protective gloves, goggles, a helmet and pads. It's also useful to have a pump, some bike tools, a first aid kit and a high-powered lead light. Mountain biking has existed in one form or another since the beginning of cycling. In the 19th century, there were few paved roads. Therefore, most riders rode on dirt roads or trails. One of the earliest examples of off-road cycling was an expedition completed by Buffalo soldiers who rode 2,600 kilometers from Montana to Missouri. 
This was done in order to test bicycles for use in mountainous areas. Mountain biking as a sport did not begin to get popular until the late 1940s and early 1950s. Groups of off-road cyclists started clubs in the United Kingdom and in the United States. And by the 1960s, an American club member had built a rough terrain trail bike, which he called mountain bike. Popularity has steadily grown since then. The first mountain bike championship was held in the USA in 1983, and it became so popular that mountain biking has been a regular event at the Summer Olympics since 1996. Okay, this is the first question that I would love you to share later. What do you like doing in your free time? What do you like to do? Okay, so please type your answer over here. Okay, I would love to see. Alright. I share. Alright, that. So you have to type there you can simply find your hobbies or activities from the pictures also awak boleh google oh, it's not google uh, you just press on the blue button there to find the pictures to describe your activities so i give you time after you find after you type you submit it will appear here all of you can see one more is fear Wow, okay. Nazifa, what is your answer? I didn't see it. Oh. Orisha. Okay, so right now I'm hiding your friends' names. Okay. Just to protect their privacy. Okay, all right. So we have two, four, eight, nine. So currently we have four, four is the highest. All right. So Adeline is getting the highest food. Okay. All right. Now we move on to the next activity. Okay, this is another game. Alright, I will start. You will have three minutes to prepare. Okay, the question is you need to identify whether the idioms, idioms mean peribahasa, in the sentence given is in positive or negative meaning. Alright, let's start the activity. You have three minutes to complete. You can see the times there, the timing, eh? Alright, so make sure you answer within three minutes. Alright, in three, two, and one. Let's go and answer your questions. You see the sentence, the one, the one that I highlighted up there. Is it in positive or negative meaning? It times. Okay, let's see who got all the correct answer. We have Adeline again, Fatin, Equan, you did not answer anything. All right, Adeline and Fatin. Okay, all correct. Okay. All right, as you can see from the screen, the those sentences are taken from your textbook. Okay. All right. Uh, the first one, I had a wheel of time at Kelly's party on Saturday. That one is positive. Second one was a bit of the honor. That one is negative. Number three, mix my day is positive. Number four, get a kick out of is positive. Number next one, bought Steve, negative. Next, thrill to beat is positive. Wins me up is negative. 
uh, gets on my nerve. That one is negative. All right. Next. Okay. This is the activity that you will learn about. Okay. This is called parkour or free running. Module 6. Time out. 6a. Read. b. Read the text quickly. What is the writer's attitude towards parkour and free running? Choose a, b or c. The urban playground. No doubt you've seen them somewhere. Leaping impossibly high walls, diving through gaps, falling from great heights, rolling over and carrying on. They look like they are being chased by someone, but in fact, they are traceurs, and they are practicing one of the fastest growing extreme sports, free running or parkour. This sport was created in the 1980s by a couple of bored adolescents, David Bell and Sébastien Foucault, who enjoyed climbing, running and jumping around the streets of their Parisian neighbourhood. They were passionate about learning how to go over, under or through any obstacles that they met on the way. Slowly, their acrobatic running developed into an actual sport, as more and more people joined them. In 2003, a documentary was broadcast in the UK called Jump London. This followed a group of traceurs, including Foucault, running around famous landmarks. The sport was introduced to the English-speaking world as free running, but Foucault and Bell had already decided that parkour and free running were two different sports. Free running involves more spectacular tricks and somersaults, which are not really necessary, whereas in parkour, traceurs try not to overdo it. For them, the important thing is to overcome an obstacle. However, the basic techniques and moves are similar and are commonly confused. Today, Foucan and Bell enjoy worldwide fame and have starred in films and adverts. Traceurs are commonly seen on TV and in music videos, and there are even computer games where you navigate a traceur moving through an urban environment. Parkour, more than free running, is not only a way to improve physical fitness, but also a way of thinking. In a similar way to martial arts philosophy, it gives you the ability to overcome your fears and control your mind. There is no list of moves or techniques for parkour because each obstacle a traceur faces is a new challenge, and the way a traceur deals with the obstacle will depend on body type, weight, speed and strength. Parkour is not a competitive sport. There are no opponents to beat. It is about interacting with the environment around you, which in the modern world is more than often the inner city. Any environment where there are obstacles is appropriate for parkour or free running. No equipment is needed, but obviously strong trainers and comfortable clothes should be worn. Parks, playgrounds and shopping malls are popular places, but city councils are also beginning to provide young people with safe places to practice. Many schools in London have introduced parkour classes, and the response has been very positive. And it's not only sporty kids who are keen. As the popularity of parkour and free running grows, more and more young people are getting active and learning how to benefit from the urban playground. The first questions, you can refer to your textbook as well. Okay, we'll start from Najmi. When was the free running or parkour created? What is your answer, Najmi? I don't wanna skip steps, you know that. So if you're with it, then say yeah. I just need a little bit of patience. You need yeah. me, I know. Hey, hello, flying from the tax. When was free running or pot call created? Like I know that you refer like to the tax like and then yeah, find your like answer. It. I know that you like it, you like it. Did I do when? They're asking about when. Did the parkour be created? Cheated. Not me. 
Foster. You can find from the second paragraph. Okay. Yeah, like la pampulo, 1980. How to pronounce it? How to say it? 1980. Alright, thank you, Navy. The answer is 1980. Alright, the next question, Nor Azualiza. Who was it created by? Created Paco like and Free Radio. As well, you can find the answer from paragraph two as well. As well, second question as well. All right, those who know the answer, you may switch on your mind share with me the answers i take this as part of your pvd marks for your speaking as well those who know the answers switch on your mind and share with your friends the answer for it. Uh, david Bell and, and sebastian token all right, the answer is uh, David Bale and Sebastian Fukan. All right, next question. Okay, next question. What were David and Sebastian passionate about? Passionate means they were rasa bersemangat. So what were... David and but Sebastian passionate myself, about. You can find from paragraph two day. as well. Most of you, you haven't done your speaking test yet, so this is part of it. So, question number three, faster. They were passionate about learning how to go over under or through any obstacles that they meet on the way. Alright, very good, Edwin. The answer is they were passionate about learning how to go over. Mereka rasa bersemangat belajar how to go over under or through any obstacles. Obstacles mean uh, halangan that they met in the street. Macam-macam halangan, apa-apa besi ke, apa-apa yang dia nampak dekat jalan tu, they learn how to go, how, uh, to go over it. Alright, next question. What happened in 2003? Waking up. Uh, in 2003, a documentary was broadcast in the UK. Alright, thank you, Fatih Umaira. In 2003, a documentary was broadcast in the UK called Jump London. Okay, documentary, you know what is documentary? Satu rancangan documentary <coughs> telah ditayangkan di UK yang diberi nama as Jump London. <coughs> All right, question number one, two, three, four, five. What was the documentary about? What was the documentary about? 
Alright, those who has answered just now, I'll give you straight away TP3 for your speaking. What was the documentary about? Okay, faster. You may find the answer in the same paragraph as well. Yes, Daniel. Mm, the sport was introduced to the investigating work as we run it. No, that is incorrect answer. That is incorrect answer, at least. Others, I open the floor to others to answer. Still in the third paragraph, the same uh, column with that documentary. So, which one is the answer? More spectacular tricks and summer stars, which are not really necessary. Hmm. Arisha, let me check. Uh, no, that is incorrect. Okay, the question asks, yes, Nazmi, let others uh, share their answer first. Eh, takkan? Uh, jam yeah, landing lah. Jam landing. Ah, ah yes. Yang do documentary tu jam landing, pasal jam landing. Ah, yeah, dalam jam landing tu, dia cakap pasal apa dia, dia berkisahkan tentang oh. apa documentary tu. Oh, dia tak tahu. Ay, senang je. <laughs> You know the documentary is jam landed. Of course, what is all about is next to the sentence. We tak kampu kita kepada yang bawah. So the answer. Run around and spread. Yes, correct. Who give the answer just now? Okay, alright. Oh, okay, fine. At least again. Okay, the, these follow a group of tracers including uh, Tracers mean orang yang ambil bahagian dalam acara parkour and free running Alright, including Fukan running around famous landmarks Okay, dia orang berlari dekat kawasan-kawasan yang dikenali uh, That is what Jump London all about Okay, question next What does free running involve? What does free running involve? So the keyword is there. I mean, the keyword there is free running. So what does it involve? Apa yang uh, free running tu dia melibatkan apa? Free running involve more spectacular trick and some sort. Alamak, Najmi lagi Alright, free running involve more spectacular tricks Ah, Ikuan eh? Alright, sorry Ikuan, okay Alright, I need to take your name first Ikuan, if not, susah saya nak pergi Alright, Ikuan Okay, correct, free running involve more spectacular tricks and somersaults Alright, next question what is the most important thing in parkour? Apa benda paling penting dalam permainan parkour? Uh, overcome and obstacle. Siapa tu? Azmi Ah. Uh. <laughs> Alright, correct. The correct answer is to overcome an obstacle untuk meng, me, what we call that menghadapi mengatasi halangan. Right, next one. What should you wear if you want to practice parkour or free running? What should you wear? Pakaian apa yang sesuai dipakai when you want to practice bila awak nak practice free, sorry, parkour or free running? Helmet. Helmet Hello, ni bukan mountain bike, okay? Ni parkour 
Tengok gambar orang tu tak ada pun pakai helmet You can find the answer from the, the last paragraph Maybe Last paragraph No equipment Uh, no equipment means uh, tak ada uh, tak ada peralatan. Jadi kita tanya apa yang patut awak pakai? Pakai, pakai. It's not peralatan. Oh, the one that you have to wear. What should you wear? Cepat yang lain. Blue comfortable clothes. Siapa yang jawab tu? Uh. Okay, Fatin tu bagi sisi. Hmm. Okay, alright. Uh, the answer you said, uh, yes, that is the correct answer also. Uh, okay, you can refer to last paragraph, line number two. Okay, they have to wear strong trainers and comfortable clothes. The last one, where can you practice parkour or free running? Uh, 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 for speaking part. Okay. Next is the activity. Okay, later this activity you need to do but then I don't ask you to do uh, in your writing books. No. I share you the link you have to do in class kick. Later I'll show you what is class kick all about. Okay, next one. Okay. This is the activity that you have to prepare after school holiday. Okay. Alright, choose an extreme sports and do some research on the internet to find information about its history and rules, the necessary equipment and its popularity. Okay, it's either you make a PowerPoint presentation or you can simply type in your words document or it's up to you on how you are going to present it so it is fair work activity activity berpasangan so you choose your own partner okay last time i asked you to choose your partner if you have chose already then go accordingly so you have to find extreme sport you can google it later not now and do some research and after the school holidays okay all right then uh, we are going to deal with your presentation with me new words that you learn from this unit Okay, from there, it's either you type T for type uh, You can, uh, kalau awak rasa you have You can scribble using your own hand Okay, you can, you may do so Any words, new word that you learn from these Or you can put the pictures as well there Then, submit But equal, oh, okay Alright, this one shared by equal The word is Philosophy. Alright, good, good. Okay, now, what is the next thing that you are supposed to do? Okay, this one, just another reminder. Okay, complete exercise C and D. I will give you the uh, link to class key. Alright, make sure all of you have join for my channel because you are going to submit any written work kalau ada yang bertulis you have to submit through telegram and your school project for PPT speaking prepare your slide presentation about extreme spot and present it after school holidays so my question now awak nak buat kerja berkumpulan ataupun awak nak bergerak secara solo ataupun nak berdua-duaan 
Which one that you want? Single, pair work or group work? Group work, group. Wow. Any other end? Oh, so I heard group work. Najmi, you want to do it on your own? Nak buat single ke? Uh, group, group, group. Okay. I let you to work in group of... It's been harder for me now. It's been harder for me now. Okay, make it four, minimum five, maximum. Okay, four or five members in one group. So I'm going to share with you the class kit now. Yeah, yeah. I'll share with you the link. You can leave the near port and stay at Google Meet. I show you what you are supposed to do for I share you the link uh, You can leave the What just now okay. I sign you the link Okay, what is the thing that you need to know is uh, this is an interactive uh, platform for you to do your exercise I share the link in your checks uh, chat box there okay Alright, how you are going to do it? I will try uh, go to class kit. Yang saya share tadi, so you will see this thing. Type uh, again. Tak perlu download apa apa apps. Just you need to type out your names there. Then I will see nama pelajar yang dah masuk or terlibat from here. Okay, this is from okay Fatin Umairah in already. Uh, okay, all right. Only Fatin Umairah are able to join right now. The rest, I will monitor your work from here. So you have about uh one, one, one. Okay, you have about thirty minutes. Uh, to complete the exercise, how you are going to do? You can do it from your phone also can Or you, if let's say you are using computer also can Okay, if you are see the screen from my Google Meet Okay, I try to open uh, this one from Adeline, okay Okay, I know the name because the name appear here Dia akan muncul nama dekat screen saya This one Adeline Macam mana saya nak tahu Adeline is doing now Tengah buat sekarang Because I can see the word here Adeline Lau Shuki is currently here. So she's here. How to do it? True, false? Okay. Click on the uh, pen mode. Then you can write down uh, your answer here. Then I can straight away mark and all that. And then Adeline will see my marking straight away. Tanda marking tu tak ada, takkan ada dekat page awak. Only to Adeline page. If you don't understand anything, okay, what you can do is either you text me and then ask me, I don't understand, for example, I don't understand, okay, this one example, so this word appear only on Adeline page, Adeline you boleh baca, okay, if you do not want to type, kalau rasa malas sangat nak type, nak tanya tapi tak nak type, you can press this one. The add audio mode. Then you start recording and tell. I don't understand teacher this word. Can you explain example? Then save. Then 
only Adeline can hear me. The rest cannot. Okay. Once you have finished, you raise your hand here on your right hand side. Raise hand. Okay. Then I will go to you to mark. So I will uh, that join your class kick. Let's see who has joined because I want to switch off the Google Meet. I'll see at class kick now. Adeline, Aisha, Sophia is here. Farish Dan, Fatin Dan, Fia also is here. Who else? Najmi is here. Norisha is here. Pankajing is here. Transition is here. Waikang is here. Okay, the rest faster. I'm waiting. Okay, this is part of your attendance as well. This is your PBD for reading.